from seeing God, all that God has intended for us. Keep reading, please. When he was dying, blessed each of jo Joseph's sons. He blessed the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. But what does it say about him? How did he bless him? And worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. He worshipped as he was leaning on top of his staff. He needed a staff in order to worship. He needed a cane. That there was a scar, there was a mark in his life. If you remember in the book of Genesis, when he was going back to his homeland and he had to deal with his brother Esau, that there he met a man. And the man was an angel and he wrestled with the man to the breaking of day. Obviously, he was outmatched. But he was like me when I was playing football. I went to tackle the guy, and the guy, he ran over me, but I just would not let him go. So he's running down the field with extra body holding on to him. that Jacob was determined not to let go. And you've got to have that determination when you're following God. And you want to see his plan done. you got to hold on no matter what. Even if life knocks you over and drags you down the field. But in that encounter, What we see is that now the morning is coming. And Jacob's determination, it changes the situation. And Jacob tells him, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And Jacob asked the name of the angel. And the angel says, I'm not telling you my name, but I'm going to change your name. But what the angel does is he touches, he breaks the hollow of his thigh. And for the rest of his life, he's limping. And even there, at the point of his death, he's leaning on a cane. He's leaning on a staff. And it is a reminder of the pain that he had and the struggle. So even though God had changed his name, he still remembered the pain. Mm. And even though God has allowed us to be born again, you still remember, my friend. And there are many, many, many examples of the Bible, generational habits and addictions and cycles, sexual sins and family division in the life of David, Amnon, Absalom, and Rehoboam. Lies and deception. I mean, study this out on your own in the scriptures with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob's son. Unresolved issues that were never cleaned up. Things that passed from the parents to the offspring. But we've got to be determined not to allow the pain of the past to control the pace of our present. I want you to get 
Philippians 3 and 13. How much did you get? Luke 9 and 62. And I will get Luke 17 and 32. Philippians 3 and 13 says what, man? It reads, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have... Wait a minute, I, I am not, I'm not where I need to be in life. Mm -hmm. If you're honest with yourself, as a Christian, we're nowhere near where we need to be for him. As the old song says, Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half, it just won't do. Come on, what does it say, man? Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. Listen, I'm forgetting what's behind. That doesn't mean that I have amnesia. That's not what that means. But the Greek means to neglect. It means my focus is absent. And I'm not looking at that anymore. And allow that to control me and tell me what I will be. So forgetting means neglecting. That I'm not going to keep focusing on that. I'm not going to keep concentrating on that. We take our focus off of the pain and allow the Savior to reign. As the writer of Hebrew says, I'm looking not into the problems, not into the issues of my life and my week, but I'm looking unto Jesus. That's where our focus needs to be. And what does he say? He says, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I'm straining. I'm pushing. I'm putting up a fight for my future. I'm not going to allow my past to last. I'm not going to allow the pain to reign. But Jesus is going to give me the game. I'm going to have to walk around in shame. I can lift my head and praise his holy name. You must not allow the pain of the past to control the pace of the present. You, you got Luke 9 and 62. What does that say? Here? But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plug. Listen, anybody that puts their hands to the plow to work for God. Read it. Any, anyone who puts their hands to the plow and then looks back. You keep looking back. You keep taking your focus off of God. You keep doing that. What does Jesus say? Then they are not fit for the kingdom of God. You're going to be unfit. You're not going to be in shape to do the things that God wants to allow to happen in your life. So stop looking over there. Stop putting your focus over there. What's happened has occurred. And I know there's pain. I know there's disappointment. I know there's frustration. But you've got to learn to move on with God. And give him your entire, complete focus. Because if you keep on looking back, then you'll wind up going back. And if you wind up going back, there'll be nothing but slack, slack, slack. 
And then Luke 17 and 32 is very quick, but it says, remember Lot's wife. Remember. The angel had warned her, do not look back. He told the family, do not look back. And as a result, she was transformed to a pillar of salt. When you look back, there's always negative consequences. You always begin to doubt yourself, question your ability. You always wind up at a place of pessimism instead of a place of optimism. But now, since we're talking about a new focus, new opportunities, this is point B in your notes. The new family is where our focus should be. Stop worrying about your natural pedigree. And you need to look at your spiritual family tree. Because that's what truly matters now. So take your focus off of your natural family and put it on your spiritual family. Jesus makes it very, very clear. He says that if you love your mother, your father, your brother, your daughter, your wife, if you love them more than me, then you're not worthy. I've got to be the most important thing in your life. So even when the ones that are close to me, that love me, they start talking that crazy stuff against my God, even they don't overturn my trustworthiness and my obedience and my allegiance to him. Get Psalm 51 and 5. All of you still in the New Testament. You're at, at John. Go back one, one book to Luke. Uh, actually, you're in Luke. Go ahead to one chapter to John. Uh, John 3 and 3 to 7. Uh, I want you to get Psalm 51 and 5. What does the word of the Lord say? It reads, For I was born a sinner. Listen, I was born a sinner. I came here as damaged goods already. Nobody was flawless except him. Jesus, he did not have an earthly father. There was no compromised DNA in his existence. But the psalm writer says here, we were all born sinners. And so my first birth is not worth much. But there's another birth that I need to experience. And that another birth puts me in a new family with new possibilities. You got John 3 and 3 through 7. What does that say? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again. Unless you are born again. <clears throat> that first bird it got you entrance to the earth. But that next birth is really where you find the worth. So I understand, I perceive, I comprehend that you have this lower life. But God wants to give you a new birth for an upper life. Eternal life through Christ. 
a new family. So it doesn't matter what your old family poisoned your life with. That this new family gives you hope. This new family gives you a glorious future without any limitations. Mm. So stop focusing on the old family. Come on over to the new family. Keep reading. And you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? It exclaimed Nicholas. How can an old man... Nicodemus, go, go back, go back and, and start reading at the third verse of the third chapter again. Tell me what it says. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What unless you, you are born again. There has to be another birth that's not from this earth. And I'm going to read First Peter, the first chapter, the 23rd verse, where the Lord says the following. It says, for you have been, you have, for you have been born again, not of the perishable seed. It's not talking about that first birth, but then it says, but imperishable. Through the living and enduring word of God. Mm. Read this in the, the Living Bible as well. It says, For you have a new life. It was not passed on to you from your parents. For the life they gave you will fade away. This new one will last forever, for it comes from Christ, God's ever living message to men. Yes, our natural lives will fade as dry as grass does when it becomes all brown and dry. All of our greatness is like a flower that droops and falls. But the word of the Lord will last forever. Mm. And his message is the good news that was preached to you. So stop focusing on the first family. I don't care how much they're messed up. I don't know how crazy they are. I don't care how many children they had in the wedlock. How many people are in jail. Get your focus off of the first family. Because if you have been born again, you have a new family. You have a new father. And that should take priority in all of our existence. Let's see Jesus' reaction regarding his first family and his heavenly family. Look at Mark 3 and 33. You're going to find out that the spiritual blood is thicker than natural water. Mm -hmm. What does it say, man? It reads, who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. Okay, let's go back, go back to verse number 31. Let's start reading there. It reads, then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Wait a minute, Jesus was preaching. Mm -hmm. The place was packed out. And his mother and his brothers arrived. Mm -hmm. Come on, read it, man. Standing outside, they sent someone. They were standing outside. So they sent somebody on the inside. Now this is his mother and his brothers. Come on, read it. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Wait a minute, the crowd said, Jesus, hold up, Jesus, I know you're teaching the word of God, but your mama out there, <laughs> your brother out there, many of us would say, hold up, that's my mama out there. You not care what I'm doing. That's my mom. But Jesus, he gives you a new paradigm. Mm -hmm. He gives you a new model. Mm -hmm. He shows you something greater than mother and brother. Keep reading for me, please. And told them, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. 